Hello, I'm Richard Phobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk. And with me is the lovely Mr. Suggett, Richard Hello. Suggett from the Veg Grower podcast. And uh, we're going on a little stroll. We are. Uh, over uh, at least two videos, possibly three, depending on how much time we take. Um, we're going up to have a look at the Mott and Bailey Mound, at Park Mound, I think it's called. Yes, it? that's correct, yeah. Uh, in Pulborough, or close to Pulborough and then we're going to try and get up to as near as we can which isn't very near to the tote monument which is just a little further north so it's not a hugely long walk but um when you're filming it takes a bit of time we're starting in an interesting place where are we Richard? we're on stop and bridge at the moment stop and bridge which is um it spans the river Arran. it does yes it's medieval it's medieval yeah. it's a beautiful bridge um at the moment if we look over there is a lot of water. <laughs> it's, it's very high. We've had. Uh, we're filming in the winter. It's December, and there's been a lot of rain. So I'm rather hoping that the walk we're doing doesn't involve too much uh, wet, muddy lanes, because otherwise we'll be wading like that. So anyway, that's our plan. No point us standing here for very long. Well, we're not going to get anywhere. Well, there's an interesting thing with Stockham Bridge. I think actually. It's, okay. Um, obviously, up until the 80s, this was used. The traffic. Oh, be, I've driven over it. You've driven over it. I've driven over the bridge. Yeah. yeah I, you look at this and you think, how on earth did noise get through? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's quite a. It's a, quite it's a shock. <laughs> a very narrow bridge, um, built in 1442. Yeah. By uh, John Stopham, who lived in a house just over there. Anyway, I haven't got time to tell you the whole history about that. We got a video for that. Yeah. We got to get walking. Right. I think the footpath is up there. It is, yes. Right next to the White Harp, which by the way is a very nice pub. Let's get going. So, it's hard to believe, isn't it, that you could actually drive across this bridge? Very hard to believe. I mean, I, can't rem I, mean, I do remember doing it. I probably did it in my Morris Traveller. Right. It was very early on in my driving career. Yeah. It must have been. It was certainly before my driving career. I think. 80s I was only a wee little nipper. Were you? <laughs> well they have built, uh, as you can hear and probably see behind us, the modern bridge. I think that yes. was in 83 was it? I believe so. Yeah Something you could like be right that. there. We're going to cross that now. Um, here is the bridle path that we are going to follow and this is part of the Way South Path which is a long distance path of I think 34 miles I read um, and it follows really kind of follows the banks of the Aran and the Way, um, I'm told. All looks clear. Does. Ready to yep. risk life and limb, because they do it. come zooming across this very quickly. It's National Speed Limit Road, isn't it? So it's oh, yeah. very fast. But we're across. Good. We're safe. <laughs> right, there's the public bridle way. And as it says on there, Way South Path, we go up, up here. here. This is a bit of your old stomping ground, Richard. It is, yes. We, um, I grew up in Poolbrad, lived here for 25 years. And it, we, as kids, we would often come up into these woods to play hide and seek. And oh, what an amazing place to yeah. have as your playground. Yeah. There was even a rope swing. Uh, oh, was one, there? At one point that we would swing off, yeah. Over the river? I, um, no, it was just off the, the mounds. Oh, okay. So. But there was always rumours down here somewhere are some caves. <laughs> caves? <laughs> caves. Oh wow. Yeah, there's quite a few over the other end of the village there are some caves that I know of. Oh right. And it was Accessible always, still? Or they're on private land. Oh uh, it's always a shame. Yeah, yeah. Even when we were young they were on private land, but as kids we would run in there and go and investigate them. Oh, how brilliant. Yeah. Well we're climbing up, as you may be aware the mound or this uh, promontory I suppose is a better way of just describing it we've got this lovely blue sky approaching us and hopefully get a bit of a view of the area at the end of this promontory is a Mott and Bailey well I was gonna say is a Mott and Bailey <laughs> castle was was a Mott and Bailey castle Norman times part of uh after the Norman invasion it was built to protect the river. Yes, I imagine uh, the river back then of course is a very important strategic 
place because the um, best way of getting any sort of building materials and goods up and down and across the country. Yes, well look, back then it would have came out, the, the Aaron would have came out at Worthing, if I remember correctly, or between Worthing and Shum, joined up with the Ada. Ah, right. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I know in Worthing you've got Broadwater and that was a, a very wide uh, area that's now, of course, farmland, but um, at the back of it towards something. But yeah, you, that was all underwater and the water, Worthing, really was not there. Right, let's, uh, let's carry on with our stroll past these, uh, these trees. Now they've not got their leaves and I'm not quite sure what they are, but they, they look like beech trees to me. Well, we come to a bit of a dilemma now because we've got a little tiny fork in the road. We've got the main path that goes to the right here um, and we've got a marker, but Mr. Suggett, he uh -huh. knows the area like the back of his hand and he has said... We used to go down to the left and he used to make a loop right the way round. So in other words, what you're saying, that the main path just sort of skirts the Motton Bailey castle? It does. I mean, you can see the mound. Right. But the, the path used to go all the way round the Mott and Bailey. Oh, OK. Um, but I came here a few weeks ago and that path has been closed off due to some trees falling over. Ah. However, if we go down this little path here that is quite clearly a path, yep. we will still find that old path and it's still clear up until where the trees have fallen over. It's Good. still passable. Let's go. Let's do it. No mapping about here. Just looking down on the ground, there's a lot of sweet chestnut yes. around here. Yep. So uh, we can identify that from the leaves, which in the winter it's not so easy to identify the trees. You know I like my trees. But there's also some birch here. I guess this is silver birch. Yep. I'm guessing by the, uh, by the bark. And then back there, as you said, plantations of pine, fir, pine and um, that stuff, that stuff yeah. and then on our left as we're high we can get to see down onto the floodplains through the trees of the of the river and it looks very enchanting mm. uh, even though it is flooded you were just saying there's a lot of water there's a lot of water there's a lot of water here now as well isn't there <laughs> yes, it's, uh... quite surprising actually the path here is pretty boggy and, and yet we're quite high up I'm just going to skirt that if I can. Managed to get round there and looks like we're coming to the furthest end very sh soon. You alright there Mr. Suggett? Yeah, I'm fine. Get a much better view. And there's some ra rather lovely beech trees. One here, surrounded by holly. Lots, lots going on here really, isn't there? And then some uh, coppicing here. I think these must be chestnut, sweet chestnut or hazel. I'm going gonna, gonna to take a quick de detour down this slightly slippery slope just to get a, a nicer view. Get down to what is now the bank, which I guess was a field at some point. Uh, to where the river would have been but it is a splendid day yeah going north to um, what is it called Pallington Pallington Lock Lock yeah yeah and you can see I don't know what that bird is so we've just seen a bird take off from the the reeds on the opposite side I think it's a heron. is it oh it's a heron is it it's too far away for you guys to see unfortunately but um, yeah right we're never going to get to this uh, mound. Is that, I think that's it, behind us, isn't it? Behind us. We've got a long climb. Come on in, Mr. Suggett. Up we go. There's quite a few wooded areas in Paulborough like, that we play in as kids. There's this one, yeah. which we would come probably more in the summer, and it, it's a bit out of the village, let's be fair. Uh, there was Pocket Park, which is in the recreation field, a little nature corner in, in the uh, corner of the recreation field uh, had a little stream running through it lots of woods lots of trees 
in quite a small area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can, I can see. Great fun for the parents when the kids come back covered Caked in, in mud. mud. Yeah. Listen, we've run out of time on this video. You're going to have to tune in on the next one to see if we get to the top of the mound. We're going to the top, are we? We're going to the top, up there. Up where? Up there. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks very much for part one, Richard. You're welcome. Join us on the next one to see if we can get to the top of the park mound, Mott and Bailey Castle, built by the Normans, and then heading off to the Tote Monument. Till the next one, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and consider becoming a patron and support what we do. Till then, from Richard Suggett and myself, check out the Veg Grower podcast, all good fun. Bye for now. Bye for now. Right. You bring towels, didn't you, to wipe the feet and stuff? No. Ha, 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 ha.